today we are reading Shark Lady, the true story of how Eugenie Clark became the ocean's most fearless scientist. This is a true story about Eugenie Clark. If you Google her, you will find some neat videos about her life. It's written by Jess Keating, and it is a pretty cool story. It's a 3.9 AR level. Let's check it out. Continuing on with our shark week. Look at all of these sharks. This might be a good page to pause the video and read all of the names of these sharks. And I hopefully will get the answers to what some of these are. It was Saturday and Eugenie wanted to stay at the aquarium forever. She wanted to smell the damp, salty air and stare at the glittery rainbow of fish. She wanted to keep watching her favorite animals, the sharks. Eugenie's pretended she was walking on the bottom of the sea. What would it be like to swim with the sharks? To breathe underwater with gills of her own? More than anything, she wanted to find out. There she is with her mom. When summer came, Eugenie's mother took her to swim at the beach at Atlantic City. Stuffing sticky gum into her ears to keep the water out, Eugenie dove down. The salt stung her eyes, but she didn't want to miss a single fish. Constellations of sea stars speckled the pebbled sand. She imagined a silvery fin standing strong on her back, slicing through the ocean current. To others, sharks were ugly and scary, but to Eugenie, she knew they were beautiful. As she glided through the cool water, she wished everyone could see sharks through her eyes. But the sharks were only in her mind for now. Eugenie decided to learn everything she could about them. So she dove this time into books. Whale sharks, nurse sharks, tiger sharks, lemon sharks. Eugenie wanted to know about them all. She also joined the Queen's County Aquarium Society as its youngest member. Eugenie's notebook filled with sharks. They swam in her daydreams and on the margins of her pages. At home, Eugenie's mother surprised her with an aquarium of her own. A 15 gallon tank was much too small for sharks, but Eugenie saved her allowance to buy guppies, clownfish, and coral red snails. It felt as big as an ocean in her room. Their small apartment became an aquarium, a laboratory, and a sanctuary. As she grew older, many were still telling Eugenie what to do. Forget those sharks, be a secretary, be a housewife. Eugenie wanted to study zoology but some of her professors thought women weren't smart enough to be scientists or brave enough to explore the oceans. And they said sharks were mindless monsters. Eugenie knew better. Her dream was as big as a whale shark. So again, Eugenie dove.
She plunged into every course she could. Her laboratory became her home. From sunrise to sunset, she studied how fish grow, how they behave, and how they were put together both inside and out. Despite all the people who didn't believe in her, Eugenie was becoming one of the smartest students in her field. Even after she earned her degree, many still doubted her. But Eugenie's work was just beginning. Eager to make discoveries of her own, Eugenie finally dove into the open ocean. In the Red Sea, Eugenie collected hundreds of fish, including three new species that had not been discovered before. A Red Sea Sand Diver, a Beryl Zinnia Pipefish, and a Volcano Triple Fin. On a research mission exploring the Palau Islands, Eugenie was, was diving alone when she encountered her first ever wild shark. She wasn't afraid. Instead, she thought it was beautiful. In Isla Mujeres, she dispelled the myth that sharks must keep moving to stay alive. When she swam through dark caves, still and silent, full of rusting sharks. Eugenie's daring heart grew bolder with each dive. Soon, they began to call her Shark Lady. Eugenie had proven she was smart enough to be a scientist and brave enough to explore the oceans. As her courage grew, she began to love and understand her beloved sharks. More and more, but she never forgot many still believe that sharks were mindless killers. Because of their scary reputations, humans were hunting sharks all over the world. Eugenie knew that sharks weren't stupid or mean. She was determined to prove everyone wrong. Eugenie fished through her mind and devised a brilliant experiment. Could she train a shark the way a person could train dogs? Sh were sharks much smarter than anyone knew? They were. Eugenie was the first scientist in the world to train sharks and even learned they could remember their training for at least two months after. She trained sharks to push the button when they wanted to be fed, to ring that bell. Sharks were not mindless killers. Sharks were beautiful. Sharks were smart. They deserved to be studied, protected, and loved. And Eugenie's dream was now a dream come true. Wow, that was a cool story about her. And here's some little known facts about sharks. I love how they call it shark bites. That's what we call our newsletter. So a dangerous monster, no way. There are over 400 species of sharks and of these only about a dozen are known to be dangerous to humans and encounters are extremely rare. The truth is despite their fearsome reputations, humans are much more dangerous to sharks than they are to us. Every year, humans kill more than 100 million sharks. It's important to treat sharks with respect, but there is no need to fear them. I'm kind of scared of them, but I don't know. We are sharks and we're pretty awesome, so it makes sense. Sleep tight. Eugenie once swam in a cave full of peaceful resting sharks suspended in the water, but were they really sleeping? Sharks breathe by using their gills to extract oxygen from the water. Eugenie noticed that the caves with sleeping sharks had more oxygen than usual. 
She believed that the extra oxygen would make it easier for motionless sharks to breathe, so they didn't need to swim to pass over water over their gills. Before confirming this discovery, most people believed that sharks had to keep moving to stay alive. No toothbrush here. Sharks have impressive teeth arranged in rows along their gums. These teeth are constantly being grown and move forward in their mouth like a conveyor belt. Was Eugenie afraid of sharks because of their sharp teeth? No way. She was only bitten once in her entire life and the encounter didn't happen underwater. Once on her way to a school visit with a mounted jaw of a tiger shark beside her in the car, Eugenie had to stop quickly at a red light as she reached across the seat to stop the jaws from tumbling forward, the teeth chomped on her arm. Sneaky skin. Sharks can move extremely fast in water and the secret to their speed is their skin. Sharks skin is made up of dermal denticles, which are more like teeth than fish scales. Some swimsuit designers have even created swimsuits that mimic shark skin to help Olympic swim faster in water. Wow. Big, small, and everything in between. There is an incredible variety of sharks. The smallest in the world is the dwarf lantern shark. At under seven inches long, the world's largest is the whale shark, measuring over 40 feet. Once Eugenie was swimming with these giants in the Sea of Cortez, one swam very close to her, so close that she was able to grab hold of it. She let it carry her for a long time until she finally let go when she realized she was far away from her boat. This is cool to learn. Mermaid purses. Some sharks give birth to live, live young. Others like the dogfish, produce unique egg sacs that sustain their young. These leathery sacs are known as mermaid purses, and they provide young shark embryos with a safe place to grow. Sometimes it's possible to find mermaid purses on the shore if you look carefully. Sharks life at the top. Sharks are the apex predator. This means they are at the very top of the food chain in the ocean. Because of this, they play an important role in keeping food webs and prey populations in balance. Without sharks, ocean ecosystems would collapse. Sharks are very old. The first shark appeared over 400 million years ago and their descendants are still around today. They have survived five major extinction events, including one 65 million years ago that destroyed the dinosaurs. Wow, look at this cool timeline of Eugenie's life. She was born in May of 1922 in New York. Her mother, Yukomo, was a Japanese descendant. Her American father, Charles Clark, passed away before Eugenie was two years old. Eugenie visited the New York Aquarium at Battery Park often. See, and sorry, my light here. Seeing living sharks for the first time, Eugenie's mother, bought her a 15 gallon aqua aquarium as early as an early Christmas present in 1931. Eugenie earned her bachelor's of arts in zoology at Hunter College in 1946. She earned her master's degree in zoology. In 1950, she became Dr. Eugenie Clark, earning her doctorate in zoology and a scholarship to study fish in the Red Sea. Eugenie published her first book in 1953 called Lady with a Spear. Eugenie discovered the belt sandfish, a species of fish that can change its sex in a little as 10 seconds. Eugenie's groundbreaking work on lemon sharks is published. She is the first scientist to train sharks to push a target to ring a bell to receive food. Pretty cool facts about her. Eugenie became a professor of zoology at the University of Maryland in 19, 
50, 68. Eugenie began writing columns and articles for the National Geographic magazine, and she discovered the molasses sole. It produces a toxin that repels sharks. So she was the first person to discover a repellent for divers to repel sharks. Eugenie entered an underwater cave in the Yukonan Peninsula full of resting sharks. She is the first to study them. That was in 1973. Eugenie, she hitched a ride on the back of a whale shark in 1981. In 1983, Egypt's first national park, the Reyes Mohammed National Park, was established. Partly due to Eugenie's work in the area, she is a strong advocate for conservation and loves the beauty and diversity of the Red Sea. Eugenie dives deep on her first trip in a submergible. In her life, she will make over 70 submergible dives to explore the ocean. These trips take her up to 12,000 feet deep. In 1986, she started going down and doing scuba diving work to study sharks. And she was one of the first people to do that. In 1999, Eugenie moved to Sarasota with her family and began working at the Moat Marine Laboratory. If you go to the Moat Marine Laboratory's website, you can learn more about her. They still have her on there. Eugenie injured her ankle in 2004 on a diving expedition and is seen by doctors. At that visit, they discovered she had lung cancer and she was treated with chemotherapy. May of 2014, 10 years later, Eugenie celebrated her 92nd birthday by scuba diving with a group of divers in the Jordan and Israel. In Jordan and Israel. On February 25th, 2015, Eugenia Clark passed away in her home in the company of her family. Wow, she lived to be 92. That's pretty cool. Um, I want to just quickly, I know that this is long, but I want to read the author's note because I love what their thoughts were. She says, I wanted to tell Eugenia Clark's story for several reasons. As a scientist, Eugenie lived an incredible life full of hard work, passion, and un undying curiosity. Through her legacy, she stood up for sharks and in the process stood up for herself. People assume that sharks were evil and dumb. They also assume that little girls shouldn't dream of swimming with them. On both accounts, she proved them wrong. Eugenie's life emphasized how we must let the world, was not let the world tell us what we cannot do. It especially can't tell us how brave we will choose to be. I think this is a message important for girls and boys and everyone to hear. Perhaps most important as a member of the human race, I think Eugenie's belief in protecting the earth species, no matter how different they are from us, is needed now more than ever. There may be, there were many incredible tidbits about Eugenie's life I wasn't able to include in this book. So um, they suggest going to and studying about her in some websites. Um, and talks about their favorite book. But my favorite thing they bring up is her curiosity and her drive to not give up. And I feel like we can learn so much from that and not to letting people that we can't tell us we can't do something. So I love that she followed her passion and she made such a difference.